Good evening, everybody. Back here with another video for you. This combines two days, so February 31st as well as, yeah, no, January 31st. Wow, well, January 31st, February 1st. Brain's not working after a long day. Wow. Um, so concludes a bunch of lectures um, and a lot of cards, so we'll get started here. So we're going to start in, or only be in first aid. Um, and then we're going to jump down to pharmacology first. Um, and there's a few cards here that are helpful, but I would try to rely mostly on the contents um, presented in our lectures for that. But there's a few that match up pretty well. Um, so you're going to open pharmacology, go into uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. You're going to go to open number two. Um, here are the pharmacokinetics and all of them, except these ones here with the uh, like equations, just didn't feel like those would be helpful. And then this last one, uh, we don't need to know that, but the rest are helpful here. So if you want, you can activate all of them and just find these ones uh, with the equations and then the last one here. And, uh, and then drug metabolism, again, you can activate all of them and then you just don't want the first one uh, just because we didn't learn that. Um, and then this one is another equation that we don't have to know. Um, and then this one isn't completely accurate based on what we learned. If you do a rectal, there is partial portal circulation, part of, partial uh, metabolism by the liver for rectal medications. Medications. So I didn't activate that card because it's not fully right based upon our lecture material. So that is it for pharmacology in our first aid. And then we're just going to go down to respiratory, of course. Um, and we're going to start in or be only in physiology and then we're going to go to two where we activated some more cards so all of them except this big equation one so it's really just this card here and this card here um, and then we're going to go down to six in hemoglobin and um, this is where it'd probably be important to make sure that yours your cards are sorted like mine um, and you're going to activate all the cards except these ones talking about uh, fetal hemoglobin we don't really need to know the subunits of that. Um, and then activating two after fetal hemoglobin, talking about adult hemoglobin. Um, these ones here about adult hemoglobin two, we don't also need to know. Um, and then these two cards down here talking about fetal hemoglobin, again, uh, not that important. Um, nine, there's a lot of cards here and unfortunately can't break it down. So, or break it down on, on the side here any further, but hopefully you can try to follow along um, these ones should be activated because it's fetal hemoglobin. So, um, you should have all of them activated except this one, um, just because these specific numbers weren't mentioned in the lecture. So I don't feel like I want to memorize that, um, 60 to hundred being the flat part on that curve. Uh, and then if you scroll down, I did not pick up the last one. Um, or this one here talking about where CO2 binds specifically. Um, and then it's just these two here talking about fetal hemoglobin again. Um, and then we're going to move to poisonings. And we're just going to talk about carbon monoxide poisonings for now. Um, you just want to grab these two. Or actually, I had a bunch of these activated previously. So um, the new ones I activated are these two down here. Um, and then these three here. Um, but if you want, you can activate all the other ones there. It's mostly talking about its effects on the electron transport chain. Um, yeah, and how it affects other parts of the body that we learned in previous blocks. So, but these five cards would be helpful for this test coming up. Um, and then we're gonna go to 11 and pulmonary circulation. and. There was a lot of cards here that had similar concepts, but I only activated the cards that I felt like matched our lectures. So picked up the first two here, uh, just because I felt like this they were helpful. And then this one, yeah, this like this card's good. And then this stuff down here is not so helpful, I feel. But then the second from the bottom, uh, this was a very key point that was mentioned. Um, and then none here, none here. And then um, in this one, all of them except the middle one. Yep, that's it. They, these cards had like good concepts. If you want to learn them, we might 
go in further detail where they might be more applicable in the future, but I didn't really want to confuse myself with more cards. So just the first and the fourth category in 11. And then we're going to go to 12 and all of them except the first one. Uh, I just don't feel like the big equations are super helpful. So I'm not worrying too much about those. Um, and then you want to go to 14, oxygen deprivation, hypoxemia, grab the first three. And then you want to go to 15, ventilation, perfusion, and mismatch. Perfusion, grab them all. Ventilation, I didn't pick up any of these, and that's just because a lot of the cards didn't match with what was in the lecture. So, like, when this says that ventilation is lowest in the apex, like, I feel like it. I don't know. It just didn't, it doesn't fit because if ventilation is the lowest, then that should, the V in this equation should be high, like the arrow pointing up. And I feel like it didn't match. So that's why I didn't activate any cards here. I'm just going to go based off the lecture slides. That way I understand the way it was taught and to get the right answer on the test. Uh, and then the VQ ratio, skip the first two, and you're going to grab this chunk here, um, talking about what the ideal VQ ratio is for adequate gas exchange, uh, which is one. Um, and then all the cards in between with ending on this one, that the VQ ratio is highest at the apex, showing that there's poor perfusion, but high ventilation. If I understood that right, I could be wrong with that statement. Uh, and then dead space, the first three, skip one. Um, and then these three here, and then don't pick up the last one, if, unless you want. It confused me, so. Um, and then going to shunt all of them except the last one, um, just because I feel like I don't, the VQ relationships in relation to the shunt, I, yeah, and I don't feel like that matched with what was taught very well, so I don't, I don't want to confuse all of you because it confused me, um, so I didn't pick those ones up. And then we're gonna go into carbon dioxide transport. And if you want, you can pause the screen here, um, but I'll show you the ones I didn't activate. So these are all helpful. The ones I didn't activate are these two, which you could activate if you wanted, if you find them helpful. I just didn't feel like I needed to know them. Um, and then this card here, because we didn't have to know it's a band three protein. Um, and then these two cards here, talking about the oxygenation of hemoglobin promotes acid release from its buffering sites or proton release. And then the second from the bottom that uh, where CO2 binds on the globin. Or yeah, this, I feel like I needed to know that. Um, and that is it for this video. So uh, there will probably be another video out tomorrow. If not, um, just know that there weren't any cards for the lectures that I felt like were fitting for our learning objectives and what was taught. Um, and then there weren't a lot, there weren't really any cards for Dr. Wasco's lectures on the um, phospholipids and surfactants. Um, so I would just study based on his lecture slides uh, for that video yesterday. And that is it for today. So hopefully you find this helpful as always and happy studying.